escape the rat race, the stress, the hustle and bustle of life, run away and live in the countryside, travel the land at a few miles per hour and watch the world drift by as the seasons merge into one long lifetime of beauty. That's the dream that at least some people have when they approach boat life. And I've got to say that I feel that I've been incredibly lucky to have actually lived some of that as a reality for a brief period. However, I feel that that's going to become a less and less common experience out on the canals. Recently, with the various cost of living pressures, I've seen and heard more and more talk about people searching for alternative lifestyles and cheaper ways of life. And in fact, as I record this very video now, I can look at the BBC News homepage and see a small feature with a narrowboat as the image and the headline, I can't get a mortgage, but I can live on a boat. And that is, of course, a very simple, important fact that even though somebody like me might look at boat prices recently and think they're incredibly inflated and expensive, other people are looking at boat prices compared to house prices and they're seeing a much cheaper and achievable alternative. And then they're also seeing the magical wonder and beauty of the canals, which of course is there, but not necessarily there in a way that is convenient for most people to enjoy while also living the rest of their life. I've got to say that I am particularly concerned about any ideas that there might be people heading into boat life expecting a particularly low cost experience, which once upon a time was possible, but now again is a harder and harder thing to achieve. And I think that the reality of what people may consider low cost is actually a lot higher cost than it was five years or so ago. And a perfect example of it in this current climate that I've spoken about before is the winter fuel costs and how much more expensive it has been this season to keep my fire pumping out the heat to keep the boat toasty with coal and wood prices going up to three times as much as they were not too long ago and to put that into context Somebody actually commented on one of my videos suggesting that it wasn't as bad as I was making it out because their fuel prices had only effectively doubled and I just thought, hang on, if you're saying that it's not as bad as I think because you've got relatively cheap fuel and that's still double what it was, surely you're missing the point here and that's something that I do have a certain amount of concern about because the cheap nature of what boat life used to be, depending of course on how you lived, if you have a big fancy boat and keep it in a marina 24-7, you're going to have some significant costs that some people out cruising on the canals, not paying more in fees, do not have to deal with. But the reality was that on my first tiny boat, out there wandering around on the canal, I was able to live extremely, extremely cheaply. And there's more to do with this than just the practical realities of paying for things. I know for a fact that in my early days, when I was still trying to figure out boat life and I'd frequently find problems or discover an element of boat life that I didn't particularly like. I could always lean back on the fact as how cheap it was, that it was the sort of justification and the huge bonus feature that I could say, well, I can't expect it to be perfect all the time. Plus, look at the money I'm saving and the potential future use of all that. And... That's something that I think that 
there's going to be some people who are heading into their first winters on a boat and pouring coal and wood into a fire thinking, flipping heck, this is a little more hungry than I'd anticipated. And then potentially be out on the desolate, lonely, wet, muddy canals in the middle of a wet, rainy winter and find themselves thinking, hmm, this also isn't quite as ideal as I was hoping. This is a little bit more isolating, which is a very true thing, and I've seen people suffer with it and not be able to take the winters, basically, and end up selling their boats. But again, now there's the potential that you won't even have that much, much lower cost of living to try and justify or rally yourself around. And this is something that I've thought about recently with some of the characters I've met who are on the unhappier end of the scale, but you can almost tell that they're stuck in a rut and not necessarily on a boat anymore because they enjoy it, but rather because it's a a familiar life. They've got that inertia that they're already on the boat and it's too much trouble to sell it and looking to get him back into land life. I have a friend who has worked with boats for decades and he's told me in the past about some of these characters who you almost feel have somehow got themselves stuck on a boat and they might be the sort of character who's maybe divorced and then looked for a completely fresh start in life and stumbled upon boat life and then they've carried that bitterness with them but only they've fetched it into an environment where they're now travelling and living hundreds of miles away from anybody they know as they cruise around the canal network and so he might turn up to their boat and be the first person they have a proper conversation with in a week or maybe two weeks, maybe longer. And so there's almost an element of being a good listener and not taking on a a therapist role as such, but just being somewhere and somebody for someone to vent to. And I've often thought what an incredibly sad way to live that is. I know I've been lucky to have a a very small but absolutely solid group of friends around me, so I've never felt particularly lonely or isolated as I'm travelling around on the boat, and I've never gone that far from where I grew up and where all my friends and family are. But I can imagine that as the seasons pass and as you experience different elements of boat life, both good and bad, If you're doing that with a sense of isolation, if you're predisposed to feel those sort of feelings and emotions, then it must be one of the loneliest experiences to be. I know certainly that some of the more beautiful moments of sunrises and sunsets that I've seen, I've certainly certainly had moments where I think, ah, I wish there was somebody else to see this, but I've also been able to take that solace and that moment of peace and think I can't believe I'm lucky enough that I'm the only person on earth who is seeing this particular sight in front of me right now. I've got to say that I feel that in this age where we are living in what seems to be an ever more dumbed down simplified world where there's not really room or time for discussion of anything on a deeper level The idea of boat life being out there in the, not necessarily mainstream consciousness, but certainly a much bigger audience than it used to have as this alternative lifestyle and this potential escape from, not the real world so to speak, but the reality that most people face every day is uh, going to lead some people down a very disruptive path in their life as they might find themselves waking up on a boat one day and realising the famous line that has been said many times by many people wherever you go there you are thank you so much for watching my friends 
please do check out my other videos, subscribe and consider supporting me by taking a look at my short books about boat life available for the Kindle and as a paperback collection. Have a fantastic day, keep it interesting, keep it boat worthy and of course my friends, farewell.